Instagram Live. <laughs> Come on in the room, everybody. Come on in the room. The tea is hot. It's hot on this one. Welcome back to another QCC. A questions, comments, and concerns session. I'm Cam, and I am back with another QCC. And the topic for today's QCC is a very important one. As you all know, I've had Sheena on here before that was helping us out with defining the key terms that come along with dealing with narcissism and NPD. There's also many other things that come along with dealing with these people. One of the main terms that we talked about that come along with dealing with these people after you decide to move forward or even discard them is the smear campaign. And today I want to talk to you all about surviving the smear campaign and ways to stay strong and resilient throughout the process. Because a lot of things can, quote unquote, trigger you whenever you're dealing with this. And it's difficult to be able to stand your ground and be able to know that all those things that this person is doing should no longer be affecting you moving forward. It's tough. It's difficult. But all the things that you share with this person throughout loving and caring for them, all the things that they know will really, really deep down get to you. Those things you can no longer allow to live in your overall awareness. That stuff doesn't live here anymore. That shit doesn't have an address. And it's important for y'all to understand how to grow and how to be resilient. Because social media, now more than ever, is a tool that narcissists use in order to gain what we call supply. It might not always be the best supply, but it's a form of supply. It enables people now more than ever to jump in front of these cameras, jump in front of those microphones, and seek people to go ahead and feed and fuel their overall ego. As y'all saw in my past 10 for 10s and also on the podcast, I've talked about different things about ego death and causing yourself to realize that when you're healing, there's so many stages that come along with it. I took a year and a half off of this podcast in order to heal, develop what I had to say, and figure out how to come and speak my unbiased truth to you all. Because my own personal biases at the time of the discard was really ruffling my feathers. I could not find any time to be able to speak to y'all because I was still trying to figure out what was going on with me. So to get in front of the microphone and be confused, try to figure out how I'm going to diagnose somebody or to say my piece about something that I'm not, I'm still not even fully aware of, of what I'm going through. It's very, it's very unbecoming of your entire platform. And it's, you're doing people a disservice when you get out in front of people and heal out loud with no recollection of what you're healing from. So as we go throughout this, ten, this entire process, I need y'all to know that we're in a healing process. Okay, this is not something that you just arrived to and now you're healed. This is a journey. In the group that I'm in, Empathic Healing Journey, we try our best to, to encourage people to heal. That's what we want you to do. It's an empathic healing journey. So many people think that they can just go through the seven steps of heartbreak and once they arrive at the end, now they can speak their peace. That's not how this goes. That's not how this works, young man. You have to go about being responsible for what you say when you speak about these things. There's thousands of people out there that appreciate things that people say on their platform. There's hundreds of thousands of people that roam this earth that are dealing with things that they can't even express. What's well, on us, the people that are real enough with themselves to speak, to not be out here just being one-sided and biased about what we're talking about. Whenever you decide to speak your unbiased truth, it's a practice. It is not something that's always easy. It's not always something you're going to get right. You have to remove your own personal biases from the situation to understand exactly what's going on with you. And that's what a lot of people in the group are doing now in order to figure out what we've come to grips with and what we just overcame in order to grow. We're not going to do people a disservice by going out here and diagnosing people and saying things about people when it's not necessary for anybody's development. So what I want everybody else to understand right now is if you feel that you need to heal and you need to grow, I always recommend seeking professional help. 
But nobody on any platform that you see Cam on is going to go about shaming you by how you choose to heal. If you feel that you need to watch videos or make videos in order to heal, by all means do so. But share that stuff with people that you know truly are caring and understanding of your situation. Because right now, what we need to do more than anything is be unbiased about what we got going on when we're trying to help others out. All right? So, on this show tonight, I have a very, very special guest, and I will be bringing her on. I hope that you all will be able to enjoy her the opportunity to just jump on the Unbiased Truth because it's our platform. If you're a real one, it's our platform. And be able to speak her Unbiased Truth about situations you're going through in our life. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 welcome to the QCC Katrina. <laughs> come on in, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Oh. Look at the love. Oh, yeah, the love. The love going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fan too. I'm a fan too. That's why, that's okay. why I had to reach out. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know no. it was a fan base, so thank you. <laughs> Well, you know, honestly, like, usually I pull out my phone, I have notes, I got all kinds of stuff going on, but I don't need a notepad or pen for this. <laughs> you, you, and I have, you and I are in a group that's about empathic key and right. in the journey of it all. You know, can you, can you talk a little bit about, for a moment, before we get started on this QCC tonight, mm -hmm. about how you discovered the group and what, and what the group's doing for you so far? Um, I actually will discover the group through Jay. So mm -hmm. I think he start, um, I think she, uh, she had started Narc Busters and then Jay came in and it became, um, uh, Empathic Warriors, I think. And then, um, and then it now is merged into this one. So that's how I came to it. Um, met a lot of great people that I spoke with personally and, um, yeah, so that's how I got there. I mean, you know, even though I went through my situation, I say every every situation has a silver lining. So out of it, I met really wonderful people. We talk on a regular basis. We're supportive of one another. And it's it's just good to have people who reassure you ain't crazy. <laughs> So, <laughs> right, right, because right? you be going through yeah, some mess, right. and we're not going to sit here here tonight and try to make sense of crazy. Some <laughs> is just crazy. It ain't on us to try to figure it out. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's just yeah. nice to know. It's like, is this only me seeing this, or it's nice mm -hmm. to get that validation because through what we've gone through, we've been basically conditioned not to trust ourselves, not to trust our gut, um, which is our God-given intuition. It is, it, you know, I say, if your body don't like it, your body will never lie to you. Your mind will reason mm -hmm. stuff away, but your body will give you clues. And, um, but being conditioned and abused is what we were, we're conditioned to actually do what's natural and listen to that inner voice and listen to that intuition. So, you know, I'm getting better. I'm going through therapy and my therapist is helping me to, to gain that trust of myself again because through my experiences with the narcissist, I stopped trusting myself. So she's having me do the inner work to start learning to trust myself. But along the line, we need each other. We all are on a healing journey and we're at different points of our journey. It's good to have that validation from like-minded people because your natural instinct is to question yourself. But when you have supportive, healthy, safe people saying, no, what you're feeling is right, it, it, it gives you more insurance within yourself and being able to trust yourself. So I agree. That, that's one thing I was talking about with Sheena on the last QCC that we had. Hearing that term, mm -hmm. me too, yeah. is the most comforting terms in the world, especially in support groups. I'm a young black man in America. I don't usually think to reach out to support support, especially not on the internet. Yeah. Oh. You know, I, I knew I had strong women in my life, mm -hmm. but I wanted to figure out how I could go talk to women that really didn't know me, that didn't have any intentions of hurting me. Because what we survive, you hear so much from that person on a daily basis, especially when they isolate you. Yep. Even more so when they're in your face every day living with you. Mm -hmm. You hear so much from the opposite sex, it starts to make you resent them. And I just wanted to have authentic conversations. And though some groups get turned left and they become dating apps and all this yep. other stuff, 
Yeah. The group that I came in contact with was a true authentic group of people. People like Lala who's here tonight, people like Sheena who's here tonight, people who also are moderators in that group, like ever. Y'all really do form a community of people that want to share mm -hmm. their, their unbiased truth. And that's what right. ultimately led me to want to get back in front of a, a microphone again. I, for the longest time, once I went through this phase, didn't want to speak. I was just so focused on trying to get away and not be seen by this thing. Yeah. I just didn't want to talk at all. So now to be able to come here tonight, speak with you about what we got going on, how we're surviving, how we're thriving in this mm -hmm. situation, is, is the opportunity for everybody around to do exactly what we talked about. Hey, me too. Yeah. <laughs> and we, yeah. we're going to be all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So before we even get started, I do a questionnaire, and I got, and it's, a, it's a way to get the, the tea, you know. There's a gentleman that passed away recently. His name was Mr. James Lipton, and he had a famous questionnaire he used to do on his show called Inside the Actors Studio. I, I do a little remix <laughs> on it, and I have my own little spin to it, but I definitely want to ask you these questions. Okay. Now, one word and one sentence is perfectly fine to answer. Okay. You don't have to go into detail, but I do. Got to get some tea okay. on Katrina's, all right? <laughs> <laughs> now, here we go, everybody. I hope you got your popcorn ready out there. Make sure you got your drinks full. Get the bottle sitting right next to you because we're about to get started for this QC scene with Katrina. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's your favorite word? Peace. What's your least favorite word? Stress. <laughs> <laughs> What turns you on? Maturity. What turns you off? Um, immaturity. <laughs> what noise do you love? What What do I love? What What noise do you love? Um, sound of the ocean. What noise do you hate? Um, sound of a toddler throwing a fit. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite curse word? Fuck. <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to try? The medical profession. What profession would you never like to try? Um, politician. <laughs> <laughs> if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? You've done well, my, what is it? Amber, you know the verse. Done well, <laughs> my, faith. oh my gosh, this is so bad. I'm not a good Christian. I don't, you know the verse, Amber. <laughs> done well, my. <laughs> she, oh. She'll type it down there for you. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot well, it, but there's. It's a well done, my okay, loyal, well, faithful yeah. servant. Basically, Jesus said, you did good, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you did good, girl. <laughs> And last but not least, it's my own personal question. Mm -hmm. What is one thing that you know for sure? That Jesus is Lord. That was the <laughs> James Lipton T <laughs> questionnaire from Kale to start off the QCC. So I got some questions. Now, usually I'm answering people's questions, but I got some questions tonight. You know, I got Go to know. It. Go for it. Now, I'll, 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 I'll be honest with you. When I first came across uh, this person, I literally was, was, I was inspired by their ability to speak. Because at the time, whenever I got into the group, I was at the point where I didn't want to talk on my podcast. I had been doing this podcast for about three years. I knew what I wanted to say. I have a platform. I got it down packed. I even had microphones I bought. That I sat in front of my door and was like, oh, today's the day. I'm going to record. <laughs> you know, I would see this person talk, and I didn't necessarily think I'd be talking about narcissism, narcissist, or trying to diagnose people when I didn't know what I was talking about. That's not what I wanted to do. I essentially just want to be able to feel comfortable speaking again. Mm -hmm. I felt like what I went through, the person I had to become to get out of that, I didn't like myself. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it takes time for me to be like, okay, no more procrastination. No more waiting around. It's time to talk. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna reach out to this person. But when you're when you're when you're going when you're going into reaching out to people, especially in that group, mm -hmm. there were moderators that came to be revealed mm -hmm. that weren't true to be themselves. Mm -hmm. And they do they you know, narcissists 
are everywhere. People that have personality disorders are everywhere. I'm not here to diagnose anybody or tell them what they are or what they're not. But I do know predatory behavior. Mm -hmm. And I do know when you go out and present yourselves to be something that you're not, eventually you're going to fold. You're unable to wear two masks without that falling at some point. And so when I, when I decided, okay, this is going to be somebody I want to reach out to and hopefully be a mentor to come back, my spirit was like, nah. Yep. And in that moment, mm -hmm. I'm doing crystal healing. I'm meditating every day. I'm praying. Spirit say no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And I, and I never understood why. Was there ever a moment, you know, that a red flag came up before you decided, like, yo, okay, this is something I got to take care of? Um, well, let's say moments are moments. But yeah. I, think I had little moments that in hindsight I could go back and say, ah, that was a red flag. That was a red flag. But I think the biggest moment was actually the day he arrived in California. Um, mm. This is, you know – when your boo is coming, you should be excited and be like, oh, I'm so happy Ooh, to see my boo. But I was just filled with anxiety. And it wasn't like the nerves you get when you're seeing someone you want to see, you get a little nervous or whatever. It was like full on anxiety. And I only get full on anxiety when there's a stressor. And I'm like, what's going on? This is this is a good thing, you know? So I went to the airport to pick him up and the closer it got to where his plane was gonna land i just got more anxiety more anxiety more anxiety so then i go well maybe it's just because i'm nervous right i'm nervous once i see him that'll all fade away well when i did see him it was like i don't know there was just something there was no excitement when i saw him come towards me there was no excitement there was just anxiety and this what did i do kind of feeling like what did i get myself into and I felt very uncomfortable, but I was like, mm, again, you reason away. I'm, I'm just being dumb. I'm just, you know, I'm being, I'm, I'm taking this, like, I'm t you know, I'm just, like I said, I second guess myself. So I thought, it's just me. I mean, stupid, it, whatever. So then we got to the car. I had my kids with me because my weekend and, um, and we were gonna go get something to eat and I just started having a panic attack on the freeway. And mm -hmm. I was like, I just gotta get home, I just gotta get home. Um, and I thought, okay, maybe it's just a bad day, bad day. But for the couple weeks following him arriving, my anxiety stayed and it got worse. And that's what made me seek therapy because I went to my doctor because I saw something was wrong with me like physically she tested me for everything and she's like you have the biological health of the 25 year old there's nothing wrong with you <laughs> so i was like well that's good you know um she's like i i really think it's it's mental it's whatever your experience it's mental so she's like i'm gonna give you she prescribed me some medication for the anxiety but she's like you really need to see a therapist and find out the root of the problem so between that time and seeing the therapist i was still going back and forth in my head I, I didn't really feel like I knew myself anymore. You know, I just felt constant doubt. Um, but then I'm like, oh, it's just me trying to deal with past trauma because I was still in the love bomb your face. So Jay wasn't ever, he never mistreated me. He was never mean to me. He never devalued me. So I was like, here's this great guy. Why do I feel this way? Um, it, it has to do with my past trauma. What actually was what clicked was when I went to therapy. And what I like about my therapist is she makes me do the work. She doesn't just sit there and hear me complain and say, this is what's wrong. She makes me realize it. She says, how do you feel when you said that? Or what did you feel like when this? She makes me dig down. To, so I, because self-realization is so much, so much more profound than someone telling you, this is what's wrong with you. So I came to this self-realization about something. And when I left the therapy session, it was like, something clicked in my head. You're, you're not happy with this person. There's something wrong. You don't know what it is. I couldn't tell you what it was, but my intuition, my gut was like, you don't want to be with this person. And there was a, a particular instance where we were all at the Cheesecake Factory celebrating my pre-birthday and the waiter came and he made a comment about my girls and he says, oh, you guys gonna try for another one. So this waiter assumed that Jay was the father and my husband. There was a part of me that wanted to scream, he's not the father, because 
I was like, why do I didn't do it? Obviously, because it's not the waiter's fault. It was, you know, mm -hmm. and then he went like crazy. But it was just this intense, like, I need to get out. I need to get yeah. out of here. You know, please don't confuse him with somebody that I'm married to or that uh, kid. Yes. It was just this, like, it was like my spirit's like, get out or get him out. And mm -hmm. ever since that time, I just spent the next couple of weeks trying to figure out how I was going to get him out because I had seen his anger not directed towards me. I will say that he never once threatened me or showed anger towards me, but I saw it towards other people. I saw it mm -hmm. towards my ex-husband when, when we would do the exchanges with my girls, he would be confrontational with my ex-husband. And I, I would tell him, you need to calm down because if you mess with him, this ruins my whole custody situation because my ex will take me to court and tell the judge that I have an angry abusive boyfriend you know so I'm like you need to calm down you need to you're yeah. not he's like I'm gonna and he would talk about on and on how he was gonna beat up my ex-husband and he even when I would vent to him about something my ex-husband did it all of a sudden became about him and how he was gonna beat him up and I'm like no you are not touching him we're not doing that. You, and so I, not that the violence was directed to me, but I've seen it directed to other people. And so I had to take time to figure out how I'm going to do this the most safe way possible, because I knew he was highly emotional. I've seen his outburst. One time I heard him in my room. I was on a, a class session and heard him in the room talking to himself. And apparently he was shadow boxing, but he was like, Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And I'm like, what? Amping himself up. I'm just <laughs> like, should I just leave my house? <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah. honestly, was scared to go in my room because I did not know where he was at mentally. And um, so when I, the time it took that I was still with him, I was just trying to plan a way out at how I'm going to do this in the safest way possible where I don't have to involve the police. Um, but yeah, going back to your question, I kind of, went on a tangent i think no we need those we need those here on the qc <laughs> yeah. tangent is very necessary but, i mean the main thing was was my body reacting and my anxiety acts up when there's a stressor and mm -hmm. without me knowing it logically he was emotionally you know physically he was a stressor uh, my body was trying to tell me this and i tried to reason away when i got therapy and learned how to work within myself I realized what the problem was, you know, mm. um, I have other problems I need to deal with too, not just Jay, but I, at that moment, I realized I need to get him out. I need to get him out. Right. And then you start, once you're awake, then you start seeing the past for what it was. You replay it. So before when I had like the, you know, trauma glasses on, Oh, he's just a really good guy. He's really nice. He loves me so much. He just wants to make me happy. Now I look at it. No, he was love bombing me. He was he was seeking validation. He was seeking admiration. He would say stuff like he would rub my feet. No one would say, oh, that's a bad thing. He would rub my feet and he'd be like, um, aren't you glad you have a man who likes to rub your feet? Aren't you glad you have a man that can't keep his eyes off you? Aren't you glad you have a man that loves you so much? I'm, it got to the point it was exhausting. I was like, I'm trying to yeah, convince yeah. somebody that you have that they should be happy that they're with you. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I guess I have to remind you 20 times that I'm glad I have a man who does these things for me. And then he'd be like, aren't you glad that I treat you better than your ex husband? Or, you know, did your ex, and he would always compare himself to my ex husband. Oh, because he's in the fight game and my ex husband was in the fight game too. Oh, did your ex husband ever do this? Does he know so and so fighter? I do. I've been in the fight game for over so many years and it always came to him. He was always comparing himself to my ex husband. My ex husband is a good looking guy, but he's like five seven. So, Jay, or oops, uh, I don't know if we'll say names, but this person um, is taller and would say, um, oh yeah, your, your ex is a little shrimp and you know, he's, he's not as good looking as me. And, and I'm just like, why do you, I'm with you. Why are you attacking him? I mean, I granted, I'm not favorable of my ex, but at the same time, I'm like, what's it concern of yours with my ex? Yeah. He was like almost obsessed with my ex-husband. 
or you know if my ex-husband you know there was like this power trip one time my ex-husband came in to drop off the girls and he kind of came in the doorway and this person tried to grab my daughter and my ex-husband pulled her away from him and he wanted to fight him and i go that's not your daughter that's that's her father like he has every yeah. right to pull her away from you and he was ready to fight with him right there in front of my kids and i'm like and how is this healthy you know so you know there was so many red flags, especially when I look back in hindsight. And then mm -hmm. the kicker was when I actually started, when people reached out to me after the breakup and I found out more things that were being done behind my back that were being mm -hmm. told about me. It was already like, I was already getting set up for the smear campaign even before we had broken up. So, yeah, you know, that's one thing that's unique about the people that we discarded. Mm -hmm. They have platforms. Yep. Um, my my uh, the narc that I was dealing with had a platform. Started a whole hashtag tag hashtag Me Too. He is a Q mm -hmm. on Twitter and all of these other platforms, trying to bring culture to you know, trying to bring awareness mm -hmm. to cultures and type of organizations, trying to bring awareness to people sexually assaulting people. Yet when it came down to it, this person was living a double life. Mm -hmm. It's the hypocrisy for me yep. that blows my mind every single mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. People with these platforms feel the need to to go and get this supply from these people that they really don't care for, mm -hmm. and they talk trash about consistently. It, it was like one of the situations where she knew my spirit wouldn't allow me to, to really rock with that, and your spirit always knows. Yep. So whenever it got to the point where it was like, okay, what's going on? She's like, don't follow me on social media. Mm -hmm. Please don't follow me on social media. Hmm. I wonder why that is, you know, and, and, and I never really went to go look. I never cared to see what was going on, but I knew specifically it was because of the way that they were living. And I knew the lifestyle that they were living. It's different when you actually see this person put down that phone and that screen and you right. see them dealing with these things going in their mind and see the way that they plot to get certain types of validation from people. If I do this, they'll like this. So I got to do it this way. And so even with myself, I, I took it upon myself to get into this entanglement. Mm -hmm. I took it upon myself to try to get in, in contact with this person. So it was on me to decide to deal with this. Going to Japan and isolating myself with that person was all a part of their plan. Mm -hmm. They knew for a fact that our spirit, they know, just like everybody else knows, that once we get our minds right, once we get on point with what we got going on, mm -hmm. we're going to be in love happily ever after, unconcerned with what they got going on. Right. Our survival to them is the worst karma mm -hmm. that has ever happened. So right. the smear campaign is inevitable. Yep. But there, you have to do something to cause them to stop. And I exactly. tried my best myself to get out of the situation without having, without having to involve police or having to involve anybody else outside of it. I'm calling family members like, yo, come get this thing. I don't yeah. know what this is I'm living with. Yeah. But please come get it. They don't want to deal with it either. They already knew before I got on the plane that the reason why this person was saying, oh, they going to need you over there. They really going to need you. I'm like, why is everybody texting me saying they going to need me and that, you know, don't leave and please stay the whole time. I'm like, why is everybody trying to convince me to stay before I've even left? Right. Like, that's, that's really, yeah. that's a red flag though. And even when the person had to move in with me before uh, they had to, we left, they were getting evicted. And at the time, they weren't being honest with me. So now it's like forced upon me to move my hand. I'm an adult. I'm an adult, okay? And all of us are adults here. Don't make a decision for me. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't mind you giving me the option to make the decision, and we'll figure it out. But don't make the decision for me and have to force my hand. That's when it feels like it's out of my control. Mm -hmm. And even when it came down to being in a sexual relationship with this person, the feeling of entitlement that came along with them thinking that they were with me. I love how you said, you know, when you were in the restaurant, don't confuse this person with somebody that I rock with. Right. At the time, I was identifying as polyamorous. Not so I could have sex with multiple women. It's because I feel that my spirit and my mind can connect with multiple people mm -hmm. without wanting to interfere with what's going on with my actual relationship with my, my all, my home base, the person that really cares about me. I want to be able to spiritually and mentally connect with other people without feeling like I'm cheating on you. Mm -hmm. They might have things that I don't know mentally and spiritually, maybe even you. Just because I'm more interested in those things doesn't mean that I don't love and cherish you all the same. And it's not even about being all the same. All connections are different. 
I have different groups of friends. They all, they're not sharing me. They're just my friends. Right. And that's what I need that people to understand about building these relationships. These people are so possessive of you. Yes. And they're so dominant of you. It's one of those situations where it feels like there's a chokehold on you mentally. And the way I even thought, she had to control that. She had to figure out how to move about it. And that's why when I was out in Japan, people were like, oh, let me meet your girlfriend. I'm like, no, this is my partner. Don't ever confuse this person as my girlfriend. This is my partner. I came out here to support her. I made sure she was good. This is not somebody right. that I would have on the menu as the, the, the main course, right. all right? Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't even about me using this person. It was the experience that was brought to me. It was an opportunity for me to be able to build. I thought that by building this, that eventually we might become something. And that's what the narc preys on the most. Right. They prey on your hope. They prey on your ability yes. to see past whatever they got going on at the moment to see them in their better life. But I had to stop gaslighting myself. Right. <laughs> well, it's funny you say gaslighting yourself because when I first came to his channel, uh, you know, when I was leaving my ex-husband, um, mm -hmm. you know, I liked his content. And at the time, it was resonating with me because he was kind of like, you know, and, you know, says straightforward, doesn't, you know, doesn't BS around. And at the time, I was feeling really weak as far as leaving my ex-husband. So... In a way, his videos kind of, you know, pump me up to like get out of there, you know. So I wouldn't say they weren't helpful in the beginning, um, but initially it just started when I started talking to him. It was just mainly for advice, and that's all it was. You know, I'd ask him about advice and, and everything, and then he he says that he had when we talked later. He had mentioned that he never knew what I looked like because most of my Facebook has my pictures of my girls. So um, he he's. I remember he said he thought I was just some older mom or something. He assumed I was just some <laughs> older mom. So I don't know how old he was making me in his head. But, um, but then one time he had posted about being free to be yourself. And I replied to that post on his Facebook with a picture of me going out. Because in the whole time I was married to my ex-husband, he didn't allow me to go out. Um, mm -hmm. So it was like, I posted a picture, I'm free, I'm going out for the first time in I don't know how many years. And so then he finally saw what I look like. And then after that, oh, he turned it up. Now it was a flirt mm -hmm. coming in. Now it was like, mm -hmm. he was, you know, messaging me every day, good morning, beautiful, everything, blah, blah. And the funny thing is, I wasn't physically attracted to him at yeah. all. He's not my type. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think at the time I was dating someone else, I was totally not into him at all. I would be nice and entertain the messages and, yeah flirt back but it was just because i was bored <laughs> it was the effort too their <laughs> effort is, is an unmatched the effort and the links they go to get you to to look at them oh my goodness right so but he did catch me on a roll moment because when covid happened everything got shut down the people that yeah. the people that were my daily support i was no longer seen like the people i work with other friends because we are all locked down so I didn't have access to friends and other people to my support that was helping me through the breakup with my ex-husband. So here he come and he starts saying sweet things to me. I think our first phone conversation was five or six hours long. And he is telling me everything I want to hear. Because like you said, they prey on your hope. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, in my head, I was like, Katrina, he's not your type. But maybe that's what's gotten you, you gotten you into this mess. Maybe you need to try mm -hmm. someone you're not attracted to, and he'll really be a nice guy. <laughs> you know, the reasoning mm -hmm. that we tell ourselves, you know, and I said, gaslighting yeah. myself. Like, it's going to yeah, be good. Like yourself, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good because he's a nice guy. He's saying all the right things. And he's, you know, he sent me a gift for Mother's Day, and he sent me something for Valentine's Day. I mean, he's doing all, like, the right thing so mm -hmm. since I was had not healed because I didn't have a space between leaving my ex-husband and getting involved I was hungry for affection attention and I was just like soaking it up and that's what I fell for I fell mm -hmm. for the attention the affection the adoration it was like mm -hmm. you know because I still had that trauma bond to my ex-husband. It was like getting my fix. It was like a drug. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm getting my dopamine mm -hmm. up, you know? So it mm -hmm. wasn't this person I was dating. It was the dopamine I was getting, the dopamine hit I was getting. Um, and the, 
actually signed, they moved fast. They moved fast. He had asked me to be his girlfriend before we even met because mm. he lives in New York. I live in California. We hadn't met mm -hmm. yet. We had just been talking, video chatting. He asked me to be his girlfriend before we met because he said he knew he loved me and he knew that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with me. And you yeah. tell that to someone who's not emotionally healed yet, it's like, oh, you know, it's just like, oh my gosh, this is the one, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like I hadn't learned the first time. <laughs> but um, so when I went out, I actually went out to New York to see him. But that's the thing. My gut was telling me all, because when I went out to New York to see him, he called me on the phone because it was in an airport I'd never been in before. I was like, I don't know where I'm at. And he's trying mm -hmm. to tell me where he's at. And I actually got a look of him before he saw that I was there. And the first thing that I thought was like, Ugh. like, I'm I, get back on the <laughs> and I was like, I'm already in New York. What do I do? <laughs> I'm like, okay, Katrina, woman up. You got yourself in this position. You're going to carry it through. I'm, a, I'm not a quitter. So I was like, I'm going to carry this through. And I'm, again, I was telling myself, don't look on the outside. Don't look on the outside. You know, look on the inside. So um, when I met him, I remember he hugged me. I know, right? Keep your eyes closed. I would <laughs> take the mask and put it on my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> just don't look. Don't look. Um, just, you know, the picture, you know, Idris Elba. You know, anyway. Because they, they interview so well, don't they? They interview as if they are, you know, 10 feet tall and bulletproof. Like, I know. You know. So it was like, so he hugged me. And what, which was the strangest thing was I felt nothing. I felt no warmth. I felt no, and I'm not talking anything romantic. So when I hug a friend, a good friend, you feel, you feel like the spirit. <laughs> you feel that. You feel them. When I hug my baby girl, I feel it. But when he hugged me, I felt like, like, nothing like dead like it felt very similar to when my ex-husband would hug me or even though he would touch me and show me affection it felt lifeless I, that's the best way I describe it, it felt lifeless he felt lifeless and then I remember we went out of the airport and I was taking off my mask and he just dove in for the kiss there was no romantic leading up to let's the moment and just, just tapping I was you know and you know, I was feeling really awkward, so I kissed back, but I was like, this is so freaking awkward. And then yeah. his cousin picked us up from the airport because he doesn't have a car. So his cousin picked us up, and the whole time on the way to his apartment, he was just, like, staring at me and smiling, like, this creepy smile. And I remember feeling so freaking weird. I'm like, I'm in New York. I don't know where I'm at. I have family in Jersey. I was thinking about, should I call them? <laughs> like, no. Yeah, like he to scored a touchdown or something. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, yes. no, I don't want them to. They'd be like, damn, Katrina, why are you getting yourself in these situations again? So I was like, no, no, I'm not going to call my family. And so I'll just, I'll make it work. I'll make it work. So, but it was just creepy. It was just something creepy about the way. Now, I've had guys stare at me. And it's, you know, you see someone you're attracted to, you look at, it's normal. But the way he was looking at me, I totally got like rapist vibes. You know, it was just like, uh, like, uh, this is so uncomfortable for me. Um, so then, oh, and then he did, he's like, oh, I want you to meet my mom. I was like, oh, okay, we well, meet mom now. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm meeting mom. That's weird. Yeah. Ooh. And so I met her, but then I found out later that he lives with his mom. So, you know. Um, <laughs> meet my roommate. <laughs> right? My super, meet my super. Yeah. Uh, just checking off those you know but um so I met his mom and it's funny because we were talking he's just he's still standing there grinning like a pervert and um his mom's like oh so you know be careful of him he's got a temper and I thought that was kind of weird for his mom to kind of call him out like oh he's got a temper and he, or he's mama like, no oh mama no yeah and then he says he goes just a little bit she's like a little yeah, you know, and I was like, hmm, this is getting very uncomfortable all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I, you know, when I'm in comfortable situations, I just laugh a lot. I just laugh because that's how I handle being in discomfort. Like, I just, oh, okay, whatever, you know, because I don't want things to get too serious. So I remember, when, and of course, the int intimacy moved fast. Oh, I was to tell you before that, before we had met, he was our, before we, before we even video chatted, I believe, he was asking me to send naked pictures of myself. 
Yeah, like, which they naturally do. Like, I was, I already knew that was coming. I'm like, like when did, when did, so when did he ask you for the nudes? Because like, <laughs> when, like, seriously, maybe like a month before he asked me to be his girlfriend. So we had barely started <laughs> like messaging on a regular basis. We hadn't even video chatted yet, and he's like, "Oh, send me some nudes and whatever." And I felt kind of weird about it, but at the same time, I'm like, "Well, he's a guy again. I'm excusing it." You know, and you know, I'm not proud of what I did. You know, I'll own up to it. I did send it because I felt somehow obligated to. Um, and that's when you know when your boundaries are crossed. When someone's asking you to do something you're uncomfortable with, that's a red flag. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. then he would send me pictures of him and mm -hmm. him pleasuring himself. And I was like, wow, this is this is really okay. I don't even Intense, really, you know? I don't even really know you that well. And, you know, mm -hmm. okay. Um, mm -hmm. so when I met in person, very sexual, very hypersexual. Um, and I was, you know, a bit uncomfortable, but at the same time, didn't want to reject him, you know? So mm -hmm. again, I, I find myself, you know, part of my problems was being a people pleaser, being nice. And even when I'm not comfortable with something, I will allow something to happen just not to not make the other person feel bad. Yeah. And man, that's so common amongst yeah. us because it's like, oh, I'm already here. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. Right. And your issue is not your people pleasing. It's abandoning yourself and your boundaries. Mm -hmm. That's the issue there. Yeah. So I, I completely understand what you mean about that. So I, um, and then, you know, at the same time, I was on a dopamine hit because he mm -hmm. was idolizing me. He was putting me on a pedestal. Yeah. He was treating me like a queen. He was showing me all around New York. I felt like a princess. You know, especially mm -hmm. since I hadn't felt that way in such a long time. Just bombing you like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. And I Whoa. made even a comment. I go, I didn't even have to take my anxiety medication the whole weekend because I was getting my dopamine hit from all the yeah. love bombing. I was getting the hit. I was getting my drug. And um, and that's another thing. I see a comment that I'm a very private person, um, especially mm -hmm. in relationships. I like to keep things behind closed doors. And I told him this. I go, I'm not a person who likes to post on social media very much. I post more about my kids. I'm, I'm not really, I'm very private. So he would always have to post our relationship, whether he talked about it or he post pictures or videos. And I would tell him, please, I don't like that. I don't want it. No, everybody doesn't have to know. And he would say more like, well, I want, a people, I want people to have hope that they can find love. I go, I get it. But you don't have to have a freaking video diary of our love life. Like, mm -hmm. and despite me telling him I was uncomfortable, he continued to do so. Um, mm -hmm. And it just, and when he would try to film me, I mean, it was pretty obvious to me, but I'm not comfortable with this. But he didn't care. He, and I felt, mm -hmm. I go, I feel like I'm just more about content than an actual relationship. I'm just content mm -hmm. for you. No, I, I'm, or, and, and then he would go on and on about my looks. And again, I felt like this is, I'm just someone to show off. I'm not saying I'm the best looking chick out there, but he was so into my looks. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. I'm not saying, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I know there's a lot more prettier women out there than me, but I knew that he was very physically attracted to me and he was like showing me off, showing me off. And <laughs> it's like, it, that made me uncomfortable. And then also he'd always talk about his ex Carmen, Carla whatever using the wrong name but he whatever always, her name is yeah he, he always talked about his ex and it's like he was purposely throwing our relationship in her face and he'd always talk about her he would compare me to her and i even at times felt insecure so i would like compare myself to her found myself like well, she's pretty you know and then i would kind of compare it's like he was triangulating us and i never met the woman <laughs> you know and you know, he would compare, he'd compare our bodies, he would compare our hair, he would, it, it was like he would get to the very details about comparing us. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I thought you were over this woman. And I thought this woman was so evil. Why are you still talking about her? Why is she mm -hmm. still coming up? Most of our conversations were either about her or about my ex husband, because he always mm -hmm. brought it there. It's like, can we move mm -hmm. past this? Can we move past our exes? And mm -hmm. onto what we're gonna do together as a couple? It was all about the exes. And then he would yeah. always compare himself to my ex-husband, like I said. And I knew that he was threatened by my ex-husband because my ex-husband is good looking. And I was highly physically attracted to my ex-husband. And he knew that. 
He knew that. Mm -hmm. So he had to constantly always go on and on how great he was and how yes. much better he was than my ex-husband. And um, I always felt like I had to constantly validate him, constantly tell him, mm -hmm. he's like, well, do you appreciate to do this? Do you do um, it was exhausting. It was exhausting. <laughs> I have no problem giving people compliments, but it needs to be organic. Let me do it on my own. Don't, don't yeah. prod me to do it. Let me be organic. And I'm very, you know, um, generous with my compliments. Um, and it was just like, but his was, he needed constant, constant, constant. And I'm like, I'm, this is exhausting. This is, I'm yeah. exhausted. I feel more tired than I should be. And mm -hmm. um, it was just, you know, I think, what kept me in it so long is because I kept raising, you know, he's a good guy because he's not treating you bad because he never treated me bad. But in hindsight, he did because he's manipulating me and everything. But I mean, he never yeah. out and out devalued me, abused, like treated me bad, called me names, never anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. So in my mind, I was like, oh, Katrina, you're just being too picky. You're being too mm -hmm. anal. You know, nobody's perfect, you know. And so that's why I was in it so long. But it was easier to deny reality because we were living separate. He was still in New York and I was in Cali. But it's a lot harder to deny your gut when you see the person every day. So when he moved to California, it was a whole different story from day one. I'm telling you. Old I'm glad story. you mentioned that, like, they'll do things and say things about their platform claiming that, oh, mm -hmm. this is going to help me grow. This is going to help me be great. Mm -hmm. This is going to be something that people are going to appreciate about me. Yeah. And that's the same way that I was told. Like, I was told, oh, if you do this with me, we're going to grow. But I'm, I, I was literally, like, with this person, I was, they, they always catch you when you're feeling bad about yourself. I was yep. just, I was, I was dealing with trying to figure out how I identified. I knew I felt like I wanted to be polyamorous, but I didn't know if anybody would appreciate that about right. me. They always thought, oh, you want to have sex with multiple people? And it's like, that's like, don't, you don't understand. I have strong women in my life that literally just want to pour into my mind. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all. I want to be able to talk to them at four in the morning without you thinking that I'm doing something I'm not. Right. You know, but I don't want to, but I also want to make sure she understands that I'm here for her when she needs me, mm -hmm. no matter what. And so it's things like that that I couldn't explain to her. Well, she knew, just like everybody else knows, that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm one of those people that I don't like to, I'm not bashful. I understand a lot of things about myself, so I'm not insecure about those things. Mm -hmm. the, the pictures, the sex came instantly. You know what I'm saying? It was like one of those things where it wasn't even something like, I'm like, dang, I, I know I ain't got it this good. Now, now I got a game, but I'm not, I'm not mad and I'm not 2K. Yeah. You gotta be kidding me, you know? Like the, the way that this person showed me love, the way they admired me, the, the massages, the overall appeal of it all, yeah. especially when I didn't have much else going for me. Right. It was literally only that person every morning when I woke up texting yeah. me, what are you doing, what you got going on? Mm -hmm. And I'm a very reserved person as is. I was already working on my podcast and things like that, but that was more sports focused. We weren't talking about universal things. I didn't have to talk about my personal life much. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I had to dive into that at all. And I wasn't doing any type of work to make sure that I was more introspective other than meditation here and there and just having good talks with my friends. But this person knew that if I take this person out of this environment and get them into what I was into, I'd be more successful. This person had OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, like, you know that I don't like watching stuff online. You know I like being personal. I don't like doing that type of stuff. I like the personal aspect of all of that. So she instantly was like, hey, why don't you jump on OnlyFans? You already have a great personality. You already have other, other things. I was like, it was like a siren yeah. almost. Like, hey, like, this is going to help me grow. We're already out of work. We don't have any money. You want to go to Japan, don't you? And at the time, I never even had a passport. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything. Like, I had nothing. I was like, what am I trying to do to go to Japan? Right. I'm just, but this person just convincing me of all of these ways that this has been beneficial. Yep. And I'm, what, what am I? I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that, you know, mm -hmm. this person doesn't really need this OnlyFans. They just broke. If they utilize their degree, right. won't they just utilize the degree they have? I'm gonna show her a different route. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be Captain Sigma. Mm -hmm. That's it, that ain't me. This is my partner. This right. is not my girlfriend. Right. <laughs> but uh, I I like it myself to think that I knew what I could do to help this person out. But I didn't want to be involved with that per se. I just knew I wanted to figure out a different route. Mm -hmm. So when it came to actually trying to stay away from the platform, trying to get away from that, I spent, I spent a whole entire year off trying to 
figure out if I was okay with the fact that that part of me was exposed to people that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. When you expose yourself to different types of people, especially people that are on their platforms that they like to run to, there are types of people that are looking for a certain type of dopamine hit themselves. Yes. And when they're consuming things about me that I don't necessarily want them to know, right. necessarily want them to view, I feel uncomfortable. I feel exposed. Mm -hmm. There's, especially with the people that we were dealing with, I can't just wash off some of the things that they're thinking about. Right. I have to do some, some saging. I got to go get some Palo Santo. I, 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 I got Christmas the in my hand right now. I was like, I was <laughs> telling the girls, after being with this person, I feel like I need to bathe in Clorox and holy water. I'm, like, I'm hey, telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah, because on a side note, the hygiene mm -hmm. was bad. Okay. It, it, it gets worse when you got to tell grown people to go bathe. To yeah. change your draws. Oh Have you God, eaten yes. today? You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. stuff like that that I was not used to doing with the person. I'm yeah. over here thinking, okay, we're in Japan. It's culture shock. You're not used to being where you are. Things are going bad for you. Maybe will things will work out. But as things progressed, yeah. and I found myself now going to Google and, and typing in their yeah. symptoms yeah. and trying to figure out what's going on with this person, kind of like Sheena was saying on our like, yo, what's going on with this type of person? That's when you know you're dealing with a whole nother animal. And it's not on me to fix it. Yeah. I'm not trying to no shoe. I'm not trying to tell you how to fix it. Look, first of all, as, as far as we know, there's no cure for this thing, okay? <laughs> Ain't no cure. Ain't no cure. I know. And it's hard to find somebody to talk to about it because your friends and family just think, oh, you're just dealing with somebody. They're they just tripping. They just, you know, they'll get over it. They just but, fine. Friends and family will gaslight you the most. But you know what's funny, though? I have a friend. She's... She's been a friend. We were pregnant together. We've been friends for years. She, um, she, she got a sense for him. She's like, I wanted to tell you, but you seem so into him. I didn't want to piss you off. But she said, I watched, she just watched a couple of his videos and she pegged him right away. She's like, mm. he's grandiose. He's self-absorbed. It's all about him. I don't hear him really giving sound advice to his viewers. It's about his life and it's all about him so with you look at other youtubers they'll have content like maybe it's on gaslighting and they may mm -hmm. have a small example of how they were gaslighted but the majority of the content is the education factor well mm -hmm. what my friend pointed out was that the majority he would have maybe oh yeah you know a little bit of reaching out to the viewers but she goes most of his his video was about himself and yes. and this friend of mine is really good judge of character and i always say i got before i date anybody else i gotta run him by you because she picks mm -hmm. up on stuff like some people are just good at they just pick it up she picked it we up we have strong she people in our lives online. she didn't have to be yeah, around they, they, him she's like i saw yeah. videos knew exactly what he was and <laughs> she's like, i knew she's like katrina i want to tell you so bad but i didn't want you getting mad at me i'm all girl if you ever see me making a mistake i can you better tell me I can be mad at you, but I'd rather be mad at you than make another mistake like that. Yeah. Um, Listen, to our people that are watching this, if y'all see us making some dumb shit happen, stop us. Yes. Correct yes. us. Don't have us out here looking crazy. Don't have me on the plane halfway across the world with this person in the 600 square foot apartment right. in the quarantine. Yes. Don't do this to me. I'm like, you know, I, you know, I didn't mind going to New York, but I'd rather gone to New York to go visit family, not have that experience. <laughs> but um mm -hmm. and you know i mean i'll be going out there in the future because i want to see my buds and then you know mm -hmm. hang out but i mean he, he ain't gonna make he, i'm not gonna run like his ex did i'm not afraid of him and that's when we brought the whole this whole topic of smear campaign i mean because he's he was successful in the first time around she was scared of him and very much so here's this you know 250 pound six one guy and she was tiny. I think she's tinier than me. She's like five something, a hundred pounds soaking wet. And mm -hmm. he's saying things to her. And this is stuff he's admitted to me. So I've never mm -hmm. talked to the woman, but he admitted mm -hmm. to me that he told her that if she messes with him or tries to say anything about him, because they were both in the salsa scene together, that he, you know, basically put her in fear for her life, said he was going to mm -hmm. take her to the river and she would disappear. And mm -hmm. he admitted this, telling me that he yeah. basically threatened her life. And I thought, uh, okay. And I thought, well, okay, maybe again, trying to just, 
maybe he's just really, really angry. He doesn't really mean that. <laughs> yes, I did yourself again. Here we go again. You, and that's what we do. And I'm we cut them so much slack. No wonder this girl, oh. he smeared her so bad that mm -hmm. she left the whole state. She went from New York yeah. to Florida. She left. But I really wanted to open up not to not to talk crap on anybody because I just wanted to, I wanted this to end silently. I, I want to be left alone. I, I cherish my privacy. Um, I just wanted, you know, two adults that didn't work out. Do your thing, go back to New York. I'm do my thing. He didn't want to be mature about it. He, you know, he left, he kept calling, he kept texting, he kept messaging. He reached out to a high school friend of mine. And my friend's like, why is he contacting me? He had his mom call me. He reached out to other people um, from the group. I mean, he was just on this campaign to get a hold of me. And I was like, enough, enough. And I wanted him to stop. And after kind of self-realization and talking to others who know him, I realized this dude is a narcissist at best, highly, highly toxic. Someone I do not mm -hmm. need to be associated with. So mm -hmm. I blocked him. I blocked, I just blocked him. I was trying to do this silently. I blocked him. And then one time he got a hold of me through Instagram for my account. I didn't know it was him. So I didn't block it saying, what's wrong? Why are you blocking me? And I just said, you're a narcissist. That was it. And I blocked him. I didn't, I didn't publicly shame him. I just said privately, you're a narcissist. Block. That's when mm -hmm. the smear campaign ramped up. I mean, it was already in process because he was already pitting people against me um, before we even separated, but that's when it went full force. And then he started mm -hmm. posting private messages online. He started, I'm the narcissist, I'm trash. He, you know, he told people about, you know, me sleeping with a lot of people uh, when I was younger. He showed people my photos and videos mm -hmm. he showed people mm -hmm. stuff that was as they do was supposed mm -hmm. to be private and i remember when even he had those i said hey do you have a lock on your phone just that no one could get in and he's like oh no he's like, no one's around my phone no one's ever gonna see these he showed people i found out mm -hmm. you know from them obviously and that is so embarrassing because i would never do that to somebody and i mean i have photos you don't see me showing people you know yeah, and, and, and it's just like it, I felt violated, very violated, mm -hmm. and embarrassed that people that I haven't even met are seeing parts of me. You know, it's just um, and that he would tell one person one thing about me, and then switch it up. Like he told one person that I was very promiscuous, and that I was. He always wanted me to sleep with another man in front of him. He'd always go on, mm -hmm. like, I want you to sleep with another, be with another man, why a video? He's just, it'd be such a, and I'm like, I would have to clarify, that's a fantasy, right? Because you know I'm not into that. And he told one person, oh yeah, she's down for it. And then he told another person, oh no, she regrets her past, she's not down for it. It, it, it was like, he's telling different people different versions of me. And, yeah. and so when he was smearing me, all of a sudden, I'm narcissist. Then I'm, what was I next? Huh. It was trash. Um, I was, I was borderline. Um, mm -hmm. Then I became a codependent. And then now mm -hmm. I'm just toxic. So I'm mm -hmm. like, dude, pick a disorder. I can't be all of them, you know? And um, it got to the point where I didn't want this stuff negatively affecting me because my name was involved. Other people's names were involved. And I hated the fact that they somehow got roped into this. They got roped yeah. into this mess. And I really felt bad about that because that is not fair to them. It's not fair to anybody because he wants to preserve some type of fake persona. And so um, I told a friend of his, a, a friend of his that, I, that had reached out to me, he's like, I'm worried about my friend. Do you have any suggestions of how I can, I go, look, tell him to get into therapy and tell him to leave me alone leave all these people who've blocked him alone, leave them alone, stop mm -hmm. talking, stop running your mouth. And if you continue mm -hmm. running your mouth with my name or these other people's names, I will take civil legal action against him. So mm -hmm. after I sent that to his friend, some things did come down, but instead of saying my name, he just says my ex. 
So there's yeah, you know, it's all these you know, other ways of yeah. trying to say that it's you. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Her over there. Yeah. And the thing is, I I did not want this to be public. I didn't even mm -hmm. reach out to our mutual friends in the group when we broke up because I didn't want it to be public. Like I told you earlier, I didn't want them to feel like they had to take sides. I didn't, you know, I didn't want them to feel like, well, I have to choose. So I just kind of stayed back. I stayed back and they reached out to me and I, mm -hmm. you know, and I never told them to unfriend him or block him. Hey, you do what you want with him. They blocked him on their own from what they saw. He was telling them to block me and unfriend me. I never did that because I'm not here to try to ruin anybody. I'm just like, we had a breakup. It didn't work out. Let's go our separate ways. But he doesn't let it die. And then mm -hmm. the reason I chose to speak out is because I'm just tired. I'm frustrated. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's the same thing every day. Same, same thing, different channel. I mean, it's just, it's the same repeat. And it's him playing psychologist, trying to mm -hmm. diagnose someone. And it's always about me about his drama and that is not helping the viewers people who are emotionally scarred from the abuse narcissistic abuse is no joke and people are actually coming to these channels for help for healing they don't need more drama in their lives they don't need when you're in a vulnerable state you're very susceptible to being taken advantage of and he's been known to hook up with girls from the youtube site so he's yep. using it as a dating site and taking vulnerable women who are broken and not healed, mm -hmm. taking advantage of that. And I guess the reason I spoke out is because it's not to clear my name. I don't care. I'm not a person who cares what people think of her. You know me. If you know me, you know who I am. I don't have to prove that anybody. But mm -hmm. I'm speaking out to the people who are in a vulnerable state, who are mm -hmm. latching onto him as if, like, you know, he, he's pastor such and such you know um mm -hmm. people in that state are easily manipulated easily brainwashed easily gaslighted and they're mm -hmm. not going to be healed so i'm not telling anyone to think one way or another of him you go do your own homework you you mm -hmm. you watch the videos you analyze them for yourself but you have to be careful who you follow there are some very reputable youtubers out there that i follow um because they talk about the issue and yeah. they have experience, they have education. So they have the authority to talk on the issue. But mm -hmm. there are mm -hmm. those predators that are using this other source to get supply. And what mm -hmm. better source of supply, you get praise, you get women saying, oh, you saved my life or, oh, this, oh, that, you're such a king. I've seen these comments. He's getting mm -hmm. all the praise and val validation that he wants. And the good thing with online is, you can be as fake as you want to be because, yep. you know, you can, it's easy to put a persona when you're online than when you're meeting people in person and they can see for themselves. Yep. It's a total different experience. As in mm -hmm. my case, having this, you know, online persona was different than what I saw living here. And so I just want people to be aware, be aware of the red flags. Don't be wrapped up in emotional thinking. You need to, you know, you need to think like a detective. You did, just facts, mm -hmm. just facts. Be very logically minded and listen to your gut. I mean, your gut can scream at you and you can have a full anxiety attack or it can whisper and you just have that, mm, I don't know feeling. I mean, your, your God-given intuition is a gift and that gift only gets better with practice. So you have to practice listening to it. You have to trust yes. it. And I whenever I've had an intuitive feeling, it's never been wrong, never mm -hmm. been wrong. But my mind reasoning has been wrong lots of times. So yeah. I guess the takeaway I want for people is like, look, I'm not here to bash this person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it irritating? Is it frustrating? I, it doesn't, I don't feel bad because I know who I am and he can say whatever he wants about me. Um, mm -hmm. It's annoying. It's like, oh, come on, dude, just get, just move on with your life. Like you say you are. If you're really moving mm -hmm. on with your life, why are we talking about the same thing? <laughs> shouldn't he be going no contact? If you're such a big narc, shouldn't he be going no contact right, right now? You know, Take like, your own advice, fam. I mean, weird. I'm in no contact. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. 
And Why are you talking about her if you should be going no contact right now, fam? Should you be going through your seven stages of heartbreak? What is this about? Why are you Why are you taking this through this with you? And, <laughs> Knock it off. And I was told by a mutual friend that he purposely, when he's like, I'm going to go back to New York and I'm going to post all these pictures and videos of me doing salsa with my friend to hurt her. I mean, he, he, he even just, said it on the channel. He, he he's like, I did it to make her to make her upset, and I probably shouldn't have. And I know that triggered her. It's like you got the results that you were hoping that you wanted, and you and nobody like nobody cares anymore. No, I don't want to be around to watch your karma come through anyway. Right. That's the reason why I discarded you. Yeah, and it's it's funny because it's like I don't have to say anything. He saved mm -hmm. himself one day. Oh, I got to work on myself. I have an anger issue. Da da da. Next day. It's their fault. It's all the people mm -hmm. running the smear campaign. No one, we are not running nothing. We all right. saw him for who he was. We all blocked him, stopped receiving his calls. He was mad because he lost a good source of supply. He didn't just lose mm -hmm. me, but he lost a good amount of his followers. So that's a huge narcissistic injury that he, yes. was, he was left without supply. So he's grasping at straws, trying to get a reaction. I'm like, you're not going to get a reaction out of me because I don't care. I've moved on. Mm -hmm. I moved on before, before the breakup. I was already done. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just, it's more annoying than anything. That's it. My concern is for the people who are in a vulnerable state and they're seeing his videos and they're taking his word as bond and yeah. they get caught up like I do. Yeah. Because if he's speaking to another girl who just separated from her narcissistic ex and she's in a vulnerable state, Oh, he knows how to talk. He knows how to talk. And I don't want him taking advantage of anybody else. And mm -hmm. Carmen, probably she disappeared for her life's sake. She was really felt in danger. But I'm going to say on Carmen's behalf, this guy is toxic. Stay away mm -hmm. from him, especially romantically. Stay away from him. If you want content on narcissism, there are tons of channels out there that are appropriate, that are actually helpful and that are not run by narcissists. They're other impacts. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that would be my takeaway. Just stay away from this predator. Um, it's, it, it's just a way to get his supply because mm -hmm. he doesn't get it in person because mm -hmm. when people see him in person, it's a whole different story. So he's easier to convince people that are on the other side of the world. He's this really great guy or Chulo or whatever, you know. It, <laughs> it, it, if I slim down, if I slim down one eighty five, I'll definitely be. Yeah, look I'll definitely be Chulo wearing the same shirt I wore the last two days in a row. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> <I swear>. <laughs> <laughs> and the hygiene, and that's another thing on social media. You can't smell. You can't smell. <laughs> Ooh, oh, my. Ooh. oh, it was. Oh my gosh, I was embarrassed for myself that I allowed myself to be in situations where I was with someone unclean to where let's just say I was doing laundry for seven days and he only had two pairs of underwear in there. That's a problem. That's a problem. That is a problem. That's you, problem. And, and, and no, ain't no detergent in the bathroom. You're not washing out the sink. <laughs> and I swear, <laughs> he would take showers, but I was like, do you use soap? Because mm -hmm. you don't smell any better. And it's just the the body odor. I work out. I work out. Like, you know, I, I promote fights. You know? he, and he's so, <laughs> the thing is, he talks about his fight game and how he's going to get into shape. He is so soft. There's no muscle tone. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. okay, a true person who is athletic and he's trained in the past, even if they stop for a long time, you still have remaining muscle tone. It's like muscle memory. They're still remaining, like my ex-husband, he still has, like, definition because he used to work out a lot. This guy, no. He was soft mm. as the Pillsbury Doughboy. I mean, um, he was soft. I had more muscle tone than he did. I was just like, it's hard to believe that used to be like a real workout fanatic because I, they're, your muscles have done atrophy. So I don't mm -hmm. know. <laughs> I don't, and he would, you know, he would just come out random, do random shadow boxing to show me how tough mm -hmm. he was. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. Like, it was just, he would have these weird habits. And, um, and they said, yeah, I'm going to work out. He's been saying he's going he's gonna to do, uh, what did he say? He's going to work out, do photography, mm -hmm. do, do a series, a docu-series on his life, 
Um, for Does that matter? He's been saying, it's all about him. He's like, yeah, I'm going to do a docuseries on my weight loss journey. Who the hell would want to see that? You're going to pitch it to Netflix? I don't yeah. know. Um, and he's been saying the weight loss journey for two years. But then he'd be like, mm -hmm. oh, my back went out. My sciatica. Like, just. There's like, always something. Well, just There's put always down, something. Put, put down the chicken sandwich. Because he's doing the muscle. Yeah. Stop eating. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll, um, you'll have a, you know some growth there muscle growth but mm -hmm. yeah it, it's all talk and see that's what narcissists mm -hmm. are it's all the future for yeah. them. it's all talk 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 you never see anything come to fruition mm -hmm. i mean he he said he was gonna do i remember he said he was gonna do a docuseries on carla fagan that mm -hmm. never came to fruition yeah it's, <laughs> and you know he said that he's gonna you know get back and get muscular that he's been saying that for two years you know, um, yeah. his photography, he, he, I remember, you know, he wanted to sell it to my church because we were going to church one day and he's like, well, let's try to sell my photography. I'm like, I'm not going to my church to sell your stuff. Don't oh, think I associate this. with this person. I do right. not know. I do not condone this. <laughs> we're going to church to praise the Lord. And then he tells me, he's, yeah. he's such a sexual deviant. He tells me that mm -hmm. in the middle of service, I thought he was listening to the sermon, getting the word in. He tells me after service, he's like, sorry, but, uh. I was staring at your legs the whole time thinking about being with you during the whole church service. You didn't hear one word the pastor said. No, one word. Oh, you just think about oh. things. And I was like, Yo. but then he claimed to be a Christian because he knew I was mm -hmm. a Christian. So, oh, I'm Christian. I've been saying, I'm, and I'm like, mm, mm. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. the narc right now that I was dealing with is running around polyamorous right now. And I'm glad you mentioned them using yeah. their platforms in order to get supply, because that's what they do. Mm -hmm. They literally take these platforms and they utilize these broken people. Yep. Even when I was attempting, when we got to Japan, I was like, okay, you take down that page because you know I only did that so we can get the money to get here. <laughs> we got plenty of money. Right. You know, so we made plenty of money. We don't need that up anymore. Oh, yeah, I took it down. Don't worry about it. I took it down. Of course, I wouldn't follow this person on social media, so I couldn't care less. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, after the discard, after I had to call the police to get this person out of my home, they're months later selling our, our all the things that we had on that site still. Yeah. And as they turned up the price to 11, I had to send pictures of the only man I don't even want them to see <laughs> in order to prove to them that that guy that was on those videos was me because it was, it was so... I felt violated. I felt disrespected. Yeah. Like you said, people I don't know, the bottom line of the society, in my opinion, mm -hmm. are looking at me attempting to do that. Now, his followers are definitely people that are healing and growing. Yes. But the people on that person's actual right. platform were not. No, these are people that were definitely going for a yeah. service that were utilizing these things that I didn't want them to use. Yeah. But the thing that attracted to me wasn't even that platform. It was the social justice aspect of this person. Right. It was the hashtag me too, he's a Q. I thought that was very honorable. You know, I'm very much involved in that. I want people to understand that rape culture does exist yeah. in organizations and all over the place. Men and women and others get taken advantage of mm -hmm. constantly. This person would like stand on here and pitch this whole narrative to me constantly. They know I love that type of activism. I'm very much about activism. Yeah. I'm in these streets. Mm -hmm. And you can see even when I was in Japan, I was out in the streets. I'm at temples. I'm praying at shrines. I'm eating crepes. You know, but little, little people know I had to stay out of the house because I'm in a 600 square foot apartment. The only person I know to speak English with is this crazy person telling me I ain't shit. You know, like, I had to stay away. I'd rather be at the temple all day long than to be worried about you. They would use that platform that they had, though, to tell people, hey, look at me. I'm here to encourage you. These are my stories. Using other people's stories on your sexual assaults to boost themselves up. Yes. Like, yo, no, I've heard that story. That was somebody else's story. Why are you telling me that happened to you? Mm -hmm. That's very disgraceful. To them. And I also yep. think that these people, they come into this idea of themselves as so inflated that they don't know what to believe in. Right. You have this elevated, the inflated yep. self. I know who you are. I know the real you. And even myself, I took the opportunity to actually look and see what I was actually settling for. Because all these things that I was entertaining at the moment mm -hmm. weren't me. Being in another country wasn't me. Yeah. Being on that site wasn't me. Yeah. Doing all these things, though they were a part of my sexuality, they weren't necessarily for this person. This was just my partner. Please don't confuse this with nobody they, that has you're good in pushing your boundaries because I found myself <laughs> doing things that I on my mm -hmm. own would not do, but yeah. you're good at somehow, 
you know, I take full credit. I'm a grown adult. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. saying that this person made me do things, but yeah. it's the influence that yeah. things that I wouldn't do, things I'm not comfortable with, they kind of break you down little by little so you comply. And yeah. even as you're doing it, you're like, this is not me. This is not who I am. I don't feel comfortable with this. Why am I doing this? It, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they condition you. They little by little break you down to make more what they want you to be. And, right. and, and then that's too, you know, it was sometimes I feel like a regret that I got into this, but I, I'm actually grateful to have had this experience because I think it really sealed in the lesson because I did learn a lot from my relationship with my ex-husband and it read up a lot about narcissism and just toxic behavior in general. But I almost feel like, you know, sometimes you need that refresher course <laughs> And mm -hmm. this person was a refresher course and narcissist. Absolutely. And it mm -hmm. kind of like really sunk in after I was with this yeah. person. So the learning curve was much shorter and quicker. So I got out much sooner. Um, mm -hmm. When he moved here, it was three months. You know, mm -hmm. I think I was done after a month and a half. <laughs> you know, so. Yo, same here. Yeah. I got on that plane yep. and then like a month in, I was like, oh, now you're crazy. Um, let me, <laughs> let me, yeah. uh, let yeah. me figure out how I can move around until I get back on this plane. It's right. a pandemic, yeah. so I can't yeah. go yeah. nowhere. Out of this situation that I'm Yes. 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 And ultimately led me to be, to me getting hurt. You know, that ultimately led this person because they thought that they owned me because they had put so much into me being over there that they could take advantage of me sexually. Yep. And even if you're in a relationship, people, I need y'all to understand something. You can still be sexually assaulted in your relationship. Yes. If yeah. you say you don't want to do it, you do not have to do it. I don't care about your sexual history. I don't care if I've done it in the past, 10 years ago, a day ago, a couple of hours ago. If you're not into it, you're not into it. Especially when you're dealing with somebody that has this inflated sense of self yep. that believes that you owe it to them. Yep. And I don't owe anybody anything but the actual honesty and my own bias truth. Mm -hmm. And it was very clear to me that once I had to wrestle this person off of me, that they don't respect me. And they see me as an object. Yep. Not even then. When I went, we went to Tokyo that, uh, the next few days. This is like, at the time, I didn't really know what was happening to me. I'm like, nah, they didn't just do this. Mm -hmm. Once again, gaslighting myself, even yep. though I know for a fact yep. I wasn't into that. I didn't want it to happen and I had to wrestle them off of me. I'm still like, nah, that didn't just. Right. So I confront this person, right. look them in the eyes like, yo, you hurt me. Just like like literally reading them their rights right now in their face. Mm -hmm. They stop me. It's like, hey, hey, I know you're upset, but um, my friend's waiting on me. I'm about to go drinking with them and left me in the hotel room alone. Right. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Let me figure out an escape route. Let me figure out how to get out of this situation. Yes. There's so many times when we're in those situations where it's like, all right, what are, what am I going to withstand? What is it going to be to break? Yeah. And I don't know if that moment really broke me, but I do know I was conscious of one thing. Nobody deserves to be treated like this. And even when I got back to America, this person like still had financial control over me because I didn't have a job over there. They told me, hey, quit your job. I'll oh, pay for yeah, your bills. Don't worry about the thing. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. good. Like, I don't worry about a thing. So I'm depending on them completely. Mm -hmm. I get back to America. I'm like, I got to get out of this situation. Mm -hmm. We get an apartment. I'm like, let's get everything in my name. Because, of course, their credit is down bad. They ain't, got, they ain't doing that. I find out she's like a spendthrift to spend all the money that we, I thought we were saving up. Yep. You know, like, it's just like, okay, hold on. I'm dealing with somebody that doesn't count my and now. You know, things are just down bad for this person. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not the best person. I'm trying to get more responsible. But I do know enough to try to make sure that if I, I am something, I tell my partner flat out what it right. is. And we can work around it. Don't have me thinking that you're something that you're not. It's the hypocrisy for me. Oh, yes. I, we're going to apply for places to stay. And I only wanted to get a place to stay so I could get out of the situation. She's like, no, like, let's just like let's just use your stuff. Because no. I want to use my stuff. Come and find out there's all kinds of stuff going on with her credit. All kinds of stuff going with her, her real history. I'm getting into the place. I make sure I get all the bills in my name. I make sure that it, the lease is in my name and this person's not on the lease. And then I get out of that situation almost a month later. Now, granted, the narc still was trying to like stay in the lifestyle, but still trying to tell me, hey, like I had to sleep next to the person that sexually assaulted me for a month and a half, trying to get them to realize like, yo, you hurt me and I don't want to be around you. Yes. But I'm trying to get to a place where I'm safe enough to get away from right. you. Now, you. These people are so dangerous. Their rage is not anger. It's rage. It's rage. They yeah. downplay it by calling it anger. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. They say, oh, it's just anger to make it feel like they're normal. Yeah. No. Oh, they I go into this. Issues. No, you no, are no, great. You have fury. Yeah. You have blind fury, sir. That you do not have any <laughs> issue. And I saw, I mean, I saw his rage, you know, towards mm-hmm. other people. And then I had, you know, to protect myself, you know, he had one morning text me. I was at work and he says, so are you done with me? I was like, you know what? Well, this is probably the best time right now. I'm at work. You know, because I was really worried about my safety. I mean, he's 250 pounds and I'm 123, you know. I'm like, physically, this dude can hurt me, you know. And I, yeah. I don't want to get the cops involved and everything. So safest way is to take what they call the coward's way and text a breakup. Because I was like, hey, mm-hmm. I don't know if this dude's going to flip out because he was highly unstable. And yeah. <laughs> there's a suspicion that he was using drugs. Um, yeah. I later kind of realized certain behaviors of his that he was using coke because he mm-hmm. always when he talked about coke his he supposedly wasn't using anymore but his eyes will light up oh, oh that's my baby oh it's a great drug and i'm like okay mm-hmm. he's like, oh, i just had to stop it because of my heart but i i talked with a friend but i wouldn't have if i didn't have to it's like no, okay but his behaviors were, were demonstrating yeah. he's still using so over oh, mine it was mary jane had to do it yeah. and it wasn't mary jane she compensated with alcohol. And so it's like, oh my God, I don't want to see you compensate. Right. Take your medicine, please. Especially, he already had this rage, but then you add Coke to it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so mm-hmm. I remember I texted him, yeah, we're done. We're done. And I leave my keys on the counter and that I had my neighbor um, escort him out. And before I returned home, I, I asked my neighbor, is he gone? And um, I have really good neighbors, by the way. And they told me that he was like, like unstable. Like he couldn't even get his stuff together. He was pounding the table. He was just really enraged. And they were like, all right, dude, come down. Like he was really off. And then a friend of ours that picked him up from the airport back in New York said the same thing. Dude was off. Like something was off. Like he's like, whoa, I didn't see this side to him, you know? And so, you know, he was very highly emotionally unstable and mm-hmm. his mom called him out about it his one of his family members said a comment on facebook about his temper i mean i mean it's just like it's not just me you know i'm not just yeah. and i'm not i'm not a chick that gets scared easily okay i may be little mm-hmm. but shoot i handle my own i grew up smart. i grew up in los angeles in the you know in the poor part okay you know i, I, I had gangs down the street you know i'm shoot i'm not no Cupcake, okay, and not fear and fe- not fearful of a pillow either. Yeah, so because right? you know this person, but if I'm not <laughs> stupid either, and this guy is yeah. twice my size, okay, I'm mm-hmm. gonna get hurt. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I ain't stupid either, and I even had to think, okay, if it happens, where's his most vulnerable spot so I can take him out? Because I was there. there. You go, okay, yeah, I'm right, but you're a real one too. <laughs> like, That's not right well, because his That's back, right. his back. He always says, it's his back. So I was like, I'm going to go right for his back. <laughs> like, I, just, I had to plan it because I did not know what the student was capable of. And I'm like, yeah. it's, 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 you know, it's you or me. And, you know. It was the same way yeah. for me to see. I was dealing with a woman. And being a black man in America, to have to call the police on another black woman, yeah. it really made me feel terrible. Yes. It's like, all right, the police were looking at me crazy. I'm like, yo, if I called y'all, I'm not here to talk. I'm not here to, like, have a kumbaya right. get this person out of my house this is not one of the situations where you have to doubt what i'm saying mm-hmm. even they were doubting what i was saying yeah. they were telling me because the situation happened outside of the country there's nothing that they could do and i understand that being outside right. of their jurisdiction i'll seek justice some other way mm-hmm. but i don't want them to think anybody out here to think that, th- that you can't still overcome this situation mm-hmm. the discard is is mandatory Yes. When you figure out some of these things are going on. Mm-hmm. It's not a, it's not something you want to play with. No. It's not something you want to doubt. When this happens, it is almost it is almost definite that this person is going to end up trying to hurt you. Yeah. And it's, it's not physically, it's mentally, emotionally, and also spiritually. You don't even yeah. know what you're dealing with until you see it from a bird's eye view. I remember calling, I was like staying, I was sitting on the roof of my apartment building on the phone with her aunt was like, yo, like, and I had not told any of my family members, because mm. I'm private. I, and it wasn't yeah. that I was ashamed. Private, yeah. It wasn't that I was, like, concerned about people saying, like, oh, Cameron did this or Cameron did that. I was more trying to figure out, okay, I, I put myself in this situation. It's on me to get out of it. Yeah. I'm finding the confidence to be on level playing field now that we're back in America. 
I was on the roof just like talking to her aunt, like, yo, this person, get her out of the house. He's like, mm -hmm. hey, won't you just leave her alone and leave that person in the house and just let her do what she's going to do? I'm like, I'm talking to a flying monkey. I instantly yep. hung up. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, nah, I, I, can't, I can't do this. That's when I realized the family, yep. people around them, the friends and whatnot, oh. I was concerned about them hitting me up and talking to me because I'm like, yo, even the grandma was like calling me, oh, yeah. baby, that's we knew she was wild, but we didn't think she was going to do that. It's like, no, I don't want to talk to none of y'all that actually are concerned about me because I don't know if well, it's that, you. Well, that's what happened to me. I had some flying monkeys from the group contact mm -hmm. me. And mm -hmm. um, when I didn't bait it, when I blocked, especially when I blocked one of them, she sent me this nasty message. And now mm -hmm. he is like liking everything that he posts. He tags her and everything. She lives in a whole freaking other country. Like, that's never going to happen. Uh -oh. But the pictures though, the pictures don't live in another go, country go, though. Go, I'm please telling get you. out of America, please go, go, go <laughs> get her. You know, so but it it was a couple people, and even when a friend reached out to me, I was so like hyper vigilant on his flying monkeys that another friend had to tell me, No, she's cool, she knows what's going on, it's okay to let her know. <laughs> I was like, Yeah, yeah like, you gotta it. Get okay to everybody's going through security. Like, Seriously, <laughs> this is ridiculous. You know, like I have to verify and check that you're not a flying monkey. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, that's what I had to do. Even you know, for my family, like there was times where throughout this process where I was trying to discard this person, there were people upset with the way that I was going about it. Mm -hmm. They were frustrated with me for being silent and not saying anything, mm -hmm. for not jumping on my podcast and blasting this person. Like, yo, you got a platform. Yeah. There was a friend of mine, she took it upon herself to start a whole Twitter and start to bash this person. It was like, oh, I'm not going to start bad. I'm like, and I, I actually don't talk to that person anymore because I came across and it was like, yo, yeah. this is not how I wanted to go exactly. about it. That's not how you think. You're taking my words that I'm talking to you about in confidence right. and then tweeting these things about this person. I don't, I don't care how authentic I'm being to the situation. I don't care if this stuff needs to be heard regardless of what I'm saying. Right. This is my journey. I don't necessarily feel right. like that was what my friend should have done. And I know no, she's listening to this. No. And I'm still not talking to you. And you should probably take that page down. Because I, as much as I want people to know that there's a predator out here looking for people in the bottom rung of society trying to prey on them, that's not necessarily how I'm healing. Yeah. That actually hurt me yeah. more than it helped me. Mm -hmm. And I hope that family members and friends know that. When you go about trying to, trying to antagonize a person, that's what it felt like to me. You're trying to get me to go at somebody. Yeah. I'm not that type of person. I heal differently, and yes. I'm still healing differently. Now, granted, that person didn't heal out loud because, of course, afterwards, because they got the OnlyFans, they're posting. That's the worst part, seeing them doing stuff sexually with other people. I was like, oh, no, I'm ruminating. I see it. I see it. Now, he's not as good as me, but I, it hurts. It yeah. hurts so bad. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it, it, it's tough to watch that type of stuff, but knowing that you're dealing with something and you discarded them, Knowing that you won feels so much better than whatever they're talking about. Oh, yeah. And you could tell you won because of what they're doing. Because we, as yeah. individuals, we're not out to get revenge. We're out to heal ourselves. We're out to say, okay, I made a mistake. What about yeah. me? Had What about me? What do I have to fix that made me pick someone like this? We're more yeah. introspective. We're more private. I talk amongst close friends or family. I don't blurt it out over there. We're very private individuals who like to heal in quiet. We don't because we have a life. Look, yeah, we, we have a life. They yeah. don't. <laughs> I have like I don't have the time to be posting a video every five minutes because I have a life. <laughs> I have a job. I have kids. I have friends. I have school. I've got shit mm -hmm. to do with my life. I don't. Yeah. I'm not at mommy's house, not doing anything with myself, mm -hmm. but posting up old salsa videos and a bunch of videos bashing exes and not having anything of value to offer the viewers. I don't Saying you don't want them to see it, but knowing they're going to see it. It's like, what are you doing? You're hustling back. Yeah, it's like he thinks somehow this is going to hurt me or, you know, there's. it could also be a Hoover attempt. Maybe he wants me to contact him. It, to it's, say, a yeah. it's a Hoover. It's a Hoover and it's an attempt to invalidate whatever it is, he knows the truth about this. Yeah. He knows, and that's why I specifically had to let people know, like, narcs are the only ones with the platform. Yeah. Now, I might be meek. I might be chilling in the cut. Don't don't come at the tribe, all right? <laughs> don't come at the tribe. Because yeah. that's that's not what we're doing out here. Mm -hmm. You can talk and talk and be all that yin yang stuff, but you're not coming at the tribe. Yeah. Especially when we know you. We've seen you. I've seen you overreact. 
I've seen you unwind and unravel right in our faces. Mm -hmm. Didn't say anything because I was like, that's weird. Yeah. But um, from now on, I'm going to stop being like my family members. When I see something, I'm going to say something. Right. Because right. you was out here acting real wild, sir, yeah. in these posts and whatnot, claiming that you're defending people. You're in a rage. You're throwing fits. Yeah, you're in a tantrum. He's having a tantrum. It's tantrum, but yeah. come on, poor, come on, poor guy. I know that you have other things you got going on. Even with even with the narc that I was dealing with, I know you still lurk and watch the things that I got going on. What you need to understand is my healing will be your worst karma. That's my healing is yep, your worst karma. Is. I understand that you don't have access to me, mm -hmm. and you're feeling for that right now. You don't have access to anybody that knows nope. anything about me. Anybody about So the you. frustration, yeah, and mm -hmm. he, he the lost, frustration comes with it. He lost good supply because, like I said, it wasn't just mm -hmm. me, but he had mm -hmm. followers, you know, mm -hmm. loyal followers that blocked him, and that mm -hmm. served him supply, and he lost it. And he he he's unwinding. He doesn't know how to deal with it because he lost people of value. But the thing mm -hmm. is, people value the very people that these narcs are attracted to are the very people that can see right through their bullshit. And will, I'm telling you. And will cut you off as soon as they see it and be just fine without you. It's because, there were times there were times when I did that, too. Yeah. Even with the group, I did that. Like I saw narcissistic behavior, mm -hmm. and instead of like talking about it or even acknowledging it, I was just like, I'll come back later. Yeah. You know, but it didn't get addressed. It nothing, and it went unchecked, and it allowed people like him to grow into the big thing now. You yeah. know, the big thing of like a Larry boy. You know, we got this issue with this person that thinks that they can go around yep. inflating themselves, and nobody sees you. We know you. Mm -hmm. We know you. Mm -hmm. I've seen you. You're not an uncommon thing. What you will do is stop. Yeah. What you will do is figure out something else to talk about. Yeah. You gonna lay off the tribe. Yeah. That's what you go right. And I don't think that they, they don't they don't understand that we have people way more powerful and educated than them in our lives. Yes. And as they no, no matter what they thought they were doing to us, is not more important than what we have to offer the world. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to understand that we as empaths, we as people that just identify as being as healing. I personally I don't feel like I'm an empath. I'm definitely on the healing part. Like, I told you, I told Cena, like, yo, straight up, I go to see how karma's doing most of the time. I'm like, yo, what's going on? I've done better about these things, and it's right. through the help of the group. It's through the help of the unbiased truth. It's through being able to talk to people and be around people that are stronger mm -hmm. than whatever the hell we were going right. I remember specifically you speaking about how, you know, with that platform, that person was always trying to, you know, like, you know, trying to show off. And what it sounded like to me was, it sounded like, hey, look at this new trophy that I have. Yep. And I guarantee you he was only doing that. For poor Carla Fagan. Yeah. You know, poor Carla Fagan. Just hoping that poor Carla Fagan was watching. And guess what? She ain't, fam. No. Nobody's actually watching. They don't care. And nobody cares about you falling. I would guarantee you that if you did what I did, if you put down the microphone for a little bit, if you put down the camera for a little bit, look, do some introspective work, do some self realization. You'll see that you're the problem. Yep. Go back and watch these videos. It's never, it's never, never been cute, problem. and it's not cute. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm coming at you unbiasedly, man. I'm not coming at you as somebody that's hurt. I don't yeah. care. Personally, you yourself need some type of assistance that's beyond us. All right, we're just trying to make sure you know we don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're done. We're, we're done, done with it. Your mouth, because it's, yeah. it's not like I said. It's not even anger or fear. It's just annoying, and you're not helping mm -hmm. anybody. People are seeing through it. If you, I was mentioning to the group earlier, there's not as many, many comments being posted. People are over it. They're like, mm -hmm. okay, we came here to hear something that's going to help us. This, yeah. this, mm -hmm. you posting about dancing, or you posting about your ex, or you posting about some old videos, or you posting these quotes you stole from other people. Th this, this is not what we need to to help mm -hmm. educate us. We want to be educated. People come into channels like this, want to be educated, want to be validated. Yeah. Um, they want someone who survived it. You don't want mm -hmm. it. You don't want to learn from someone who's not healed. What are they going to say? And he's not healing at all. What he's doing is not healing. He's just hurting. He's bleeding out in front of us. Yes. It's not cute. You're just sitting there bleeding out every video. It's like, no, this is so hard to watch. But it's also like trash TV. I just can't look away. <laughs> That's what we say because we're like, we need to stop viewing the videos because we're giving them views. But it is. It's like, it's so horrible. But I, I got to look. <laughs> and he doesn't know that people, I showed, uh, I met up with 
a high school friend of mine last weekend with her and her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I had to show him a couple videos to catch him up on things. We were just laughing. I'm like, yes. dude, you're dope. People are watching mm -hmm. your videos to laugh at them. We were literally yes. laughing at them. And her boyfriend, who's never heard of him, never seen his channel, he saw two minutes of one video. He's like, what is this dude talking about? Like, he's just, this is, I mean, he didn't even know the guy. And he's like, this dude says the yeah. same thing. Oh, he's like, oh, yeah, this dude is totally tripping on you. Like, you know, yes. he, he could see right through it. Yeah, And we're, yeah. Punk, we're freaking laughing at him, watching his mukbangs and just laughing, not because they're funny. It's just because they're mm -hmm. sad. It's just like, yes. oh, my God. It's, it's, it's classic narc behavior. It's, it's classic so narc behavior. All the terrible. things that he's telling me to watch out for in some of his highest viewed videos, uh -huh. I know I was once a fan, fam. This is not coming from somebody that just went and watched your videos for 24 hours because I knew I was going to talk to somebody that, that, that had experienced something that you were around. Right. This is somebody that actually came and thought about talking to you about being a mentor. And now I realize mm -hmm. you are a wolf in sheep's clothes. It's okay. It's fine. I'm glad you got a platform. <laughs> what you should do, though, is you should seek some type of counsel and heal. It's not on me to do this for you. It's not on mama to do it for you. I know you want to go eat pizza with her and talk about what's going on in your relationships. That's no longer going to be a thing anymore. It's poor I want you to understand, no matter what it is that you think you're doing, it's not helping anybody on your platform right now. I see the comments, too. I used to think that you were somebody that had some type of substance to what you're talking about. Even though I came around when you were doing the Carla Fagan smear campaign, but you're going to get up off this one, okay? You're going to leave this one alone. It's too much out here for you to talk about, not this one. And you're going to leave the tribe out of your mouth as well. I, I don't do things for likes or retweets. I do things for the unbiased truth. And you're not going to sit up here and talk about people that I know are genuine in order to go ahead and inflate your ego to get somebody else because you're preying on the next person. I don't care who else you're texting now. None of these videos about how powerful you're becoming are going to impress her. What's going to impress people in the future is going to be your ability to level up. So stop salsa dancing with the pretty girl because you think she's cute and figure out where exactly you need to lay down on somebody's couch. If that's not the case, then watch somebody else's videos. Smearing other YouTubers and telling them and calling them and trying to figure out what's going on with other people isn't beneficial. It's not helping anybody. The one person that it is helping them is helping your people. And I guarantee you, as much as I love talking to my people, as, love, as much as I love giving my unbiased truth, I try to be as well-spoken as possible. I care more about healing and not hurting people more. And it feels like to me, as much as you think you're helping people with sharing your journey, these are things that need to go in your little diary, young man, and not things that you need to be sharing with the world as an attempt to make an example out of your life. Once again, this is something that we're not comfortable with. You showing things about your personal life. It's not for the world to see. This is more for you to understand. So hopefully, whenever you take this break, after you see this video, because I know you're going to find out some way to see it, after you take this break from your, uh, from your podcast or your YouTube channel, and you actually do some self-work, you get more peace of made with mama, and you actually sit down and think about your life, I guarantee you're going to be a better person. Because now you're not doing things to prove that you're not hurting. Now you're doing things in order to improve. And I don't want to see you anymore. I guarantee you, Trina don't want to see you anymore. And the real ones that are now going to go do the research and see what you be talking about, mm -hmm. they might just be, they might just get in the thumbs down, and they're not going to be double tapping it. They're going to one tap it and leave it alone. Yeah. All right. We're 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 good on that. We want the unbiased truth to come out of your mouth. You're being extremely biased right now, sir. You're supposed to be no contact. If this person I'm talking to is a narcissist, you're supposed to be going no contact. Technically, you're inflating her ego based on your definition of what a narcissist is. So I guarantee you, your, 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 your logic's flawed, sir. There's holes like, like Swiss cheese all in your story now. Vegan Take cheese. a break no. and <laughs> lay off of it. <laughs> Take a break and lay off of it, man. Blue cheese, you know, like, like there's, there's clown behavior going on that, that, I mean, I personally won't tolerate it. Don't, don't come at them. Don't like this says don't add me, but no, at me, at me. Don't add anybody that you might think of. Send nobody, didn't nobody send Cameron out here to take care of you, okay? And I'm not, I'm nobody's attack dog. The unbiased truth is going to be what it is, regardless of that. So, this is beyond me. This is about you understanding you have a responsibility on your platform, being what is named, to give people what you're supposed to give them. 
I'm giving people the unbiased truth. You're giving them a bunch of you. And it's it's it's, it's unsettling. Mm -hmm. It's unsettling to me. Mm -hmm. That's right. Katrina, I've got to know. i got to know. Are there any shout-outs? Anybody want to show some love to before we wrap it on yeah, up on this? My, kids, no. my, my ex about to drop off my kids in a couple minutes. But shout-out mm -hmm. to my girls, Sheena, with her little jokes. Amber, <laughs> Amber's a wise one. And I know she's mm -hmm. she's got her little shorts going on. Um, definitely want to prop her up because uh, she's got a lot of wisdom to share. And um, those shorts are big. Trust me, those shorts are really big. Yeah, and um, these people are genuine. And mm -hmm. it, the best thing that came out of all this was making these connections, making these connections mm -hmm. with genuine people. And so we really won. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I agree, and, and that's that's what I appreciate the most too. I would have never been able to get back in front of the microphone had it not been for the genuine people, mm -hmm. like the people that are watching right now. And you for jumping on the QCC mm -hmm. and giving your bias true. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. It's a practice. We have our own personal biases, but we have responsibility to the people that love us mm -hmm. and have conversations in front of the people that we love for the people that we love. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need people like him to understand that whatever you're doing with your platform, you have a huge responsibility to stop being a narcissist. Yes. And that's what we need you to understand. <laughs> if you're not a narc, like you said, toxic at best. And even that, for your position, it cannot go any further. Yeah. I'm not here to attack anybody. I'm not here to bring anybody down. Don't at me unless you're trying to talk about right. actually just, broke. <laughs> just shut your mouth mm -hmm. on things you don't know. And just, just take a break, bro. Take a break. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> it's annoying and you're being laughed at. And I don't think that's the kind of supply you're looking for. So. Mm -hmm. Nah, even though we know what those people are all supply, a good supply, you got a healthy QCC out of us. This is the last time we're going to talk about you, sir. Yeah. And I don't want to hear no more talking. And I guarantee I will. Don't don't give me that free promo. I, I, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be free promo. So don't talk about me. Do not talk about me. Don't talk about the tribe. Don't talk about Katrina, an uh, ex. Her over there, the person that kicked me out, I don't, I, we don't want to hear nothing about anybody like that. Mm -hmm. Do not, don't talk about the tribe, man. We out here really trying to improve and be on an empathic healing journey. Mm -hmm. You will be a speed bump in this journey if we have to make you that. And it's not about laying anybody down. It's about making you understand that we are overcoming all obstacles in that group, even you. Even if you were a part of the, the fundamental foundation of it, you see you're no longer around, and you see where we're at with yep. Don't want to hear it no more. We appreciate everybody for tuning in because we just gave y'all a nice QCC delicious <laughs> comments and concerns session. Katrina, I know this is our first like conversation. I know, right? <laughs> thank you for rocking with me. You know? <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me on. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I got to understand what's going on. You have a lovely spirit. The people around that group have a lovely spirit. Y'all encourage me to be who I am in every single way. Whether y'all know I read the post or not, it encourages me to be who I am. And that's why I don't understand why people like them exist. But I do know they're going to get up off and they're going to leave us alone. Not while I'm in front of a mic or a mic. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, as much as they want us to cower and retreat and be this person that they, they agree that we're going to be, you're going to find out pretty soon that we're no longer going to let the narcissist thrive in these areas. You can be who you're going to be because we're always going to attract people like you, but we will not let you have air around us. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, you're going to suffocate when you talk about us yep. in the future. I hope that you understand right now, mm -hmm. you don't want to give us this any more free promo. All right? We already don't broke the promo. Right. Don't give it to us no more. No more. <laughs> <laughs> Much love to everybody right. out there around the world that tuned in. Yes, I'm so glad that you tuned in. I hope y'all have a great night. This has been another Thank QC Steve. Love y'all. Have a good one. <laughs>